Ah. Hello, foodie beauties. <laughs> Welcome, ladies and gentlemen of the Gravy Nation, to episode two of the monthly Chantal, the most popular Chantal show on YouTube. If you missed last month's episode, you can click on the pop-up in the upper right-hand corner of this video and go watch it now. The most important highlights are Chantal having a slumber party in a hotel room on New Year's Eve with her ex, Pete's, while her current boyfriend, Bibi, was working the holiday in order to support her, as well as her starting and failing and starting and failing a new weight loss journey and swearing off mukbangs in order to get her health in check. Now that you're all caught up, it's time to pour yourself a goblet of piping hot gravy and enjoy the show. Funding for episode two of the monthly Chantal is provided in part by NordVPN. Now you might be asking yourself, Toad, what is a VPN and why should I use one? Well, if you want to know the more practical uses of a VPN like data protection, encryption, and maintaining anonymity on the internet, you can go look that up for yourself. Chances are, if you're concerned with those sorts of things, you already know what a VPN is. But what's the appeal of a VPN for your average Joe or Jolene? Well, it's a cheap way to upgrade your Netflix subscription. Most people think the only reason to use a VPN to access Netflix is if it's blocked by their government, and while that's a great reason because access to the internet for everyone in the world is incredibly important, it certainly isn't the only reason. You see, Netflix offers different shows in different regions of the world. Specifically, there's a huge library that can be unlocked for English-speaking users with the click of a button. NordVPN will make it appear to Netflix as if you are located wherever the server you choose is. I'll use the example that applies to myself and the majority of my viewers. The United States. By connecting to one of their UK-based servers, you will immediately get access to UK exclusives such as Fargo, John Wick 2 and 3, Stephen King's It, my personal favorite Studio Ghibli film, Princess Mononoke, as well as many others from the studio, and new weekly episodes of Better Call Saul. Click the link in the description to get 70% off NordVPN and upgrade your Netflix subscription today. That's only $3.49 a month, plus you get an additional month free, as well as a 30-day money-back guarantee. When last we left our heroine, she had quit mukbangs and had just embarked upon yet another fruitless fad diet, which, ironically, involved eating only fruit. Unfortunately, Arby's doesn't offer any fruit options, so that diet lasted mere hours. In a reply left under her since-deleted fruitarian diet for health and weight loss video where she lectured us on the benefits of an all-fruit diet, she broke the theme of last month's cycles, which was false humility, opting instead to pull the curtains back and shine a light on all the glory and beauty of her true self. That's right. February was the month of the superiority complex, and God willing it will be the theme of every remaining month in 2020 because it's Chantal at her most authentic and very best. Well then, don't watch if it's too hard. Doctors actually know little about proper nutrition. Just because I binge eat on food that isn't good for me because I am highly addicted does not mean that I don't know what foods are good for me and what aren't. I'm fat, not stupid. Fruits, leafy greens, and a lower fat diet in order to heal my gut is very healthy. Maybe it is you who is misinformed. We've seen Chantal parrot this talking point time and time again. It's a useful little coping mechanism for her, and it always seems to rear its head during her most absurd fad diets. This fruitarian one was pretty out there, but I doubt anything will ever top the time in April of 2019 when she abandoned the guidance of her weight loss doctor in favor of advice from the medical medium, a man who claims to miraculously cure illnesses by consulting a spirit from the future. Like, I was really excited about the weight loss doctor, but he's not the only one out there. And I think going against what I deep down believe is to be true, you know what I'm saying, is just really not a good thing. So I've been, I've been following the medical medium on Instagram and I've seen a lot of people many different youtubers as well starting this whole like celery juice thing where they drink like celery juice in the morning every day and not just celery juice like usually people will still eat a healthy diet with it but apparently it's like cured a lot of ailments in people like eczema um fertility issues different different a lot of different illnesses 
So this medical medium, I think it's Anthony Williams, um, has these books that he's published and they're very, very popular. It's been all over different talk shows. I'm sure you've heard about it. Now, obviously, every doctor is not going to be an expert in nutrition. This is true enough. But unless they decided to put a dermatologist at the head of the weight loss clinic she goes to, I'm going to venture to guess that her doctor knows a thing or two about proper nutrition. She turned off the ratings and disabled the comments like a beanbag in a hurry, just as she did with the medical medium video so long ago. And in the waning hours of February 1st of 2020, almost exactly 24 hours after starting her all fruit diet, she deletes her video and gifts us with the first community post of the month. And I must say, this one really sets the tone. Guys, I'm freaking out. This is so hard. I started filming part of my day for you. I've been eating like I said I was going to, but I'm at that point again where I just want to eat normal. Like meatloaf, and green beans, and mashed potatoes, and a piece of homemade zucchini- <laughs> and a piece of homemade zucchini chocolate chip loaf for dessert, and a glass of milk. I know this all sounds crazy and like trolling and like bipolar to everyone, but I feel trapped in the cycle. I feel like there is not much help available, or maybe I'm not listening to the doctor. It's a bit self-contradictory. I always start thinking I know what's best and for some reason need to cleanse. My doctor wanted me to focus on the following. No fast food. No eating in bed or in the car. No diets. Don't over-restrict treating binge eating. And to eat all meals planned out. If you have proper meals and a snack, for example, rather than skip a meal, you will be less likely to binge. He also wants me on Vyvanse, which I stopped because I don't like the feeling at the end of the day. I am also honestly running into the problem of not enjoying my own content. I need to give it a bit of thought because I can't keep doing this to you guys or I will lose all of you. No, we're not going anywhere, Chantel, don't worry. I am sorry for my self-righteous video yesterday. At the time, I truly believed in what I was saying, but realize now, like some of you have said, it is just not realistic. I still want to be accountable for making changes. I also want to do homemade cooking and mukbangs. I know this seems like a slippery slope, but I think I can make it work. No huge fast food mukbangs. Homemade. I need to learn to meal prep and cook. You're 35 years old, Chantel. I think you know how to meal prep and cook. We can do this together. I still have to eat to beat my addiction, which sounds weird, so I don't see the harm in having a social meal with you guys every night for dinner. Oh, also, keep the adventures with Pete's, etc. Just not solely weight loss stuff. I honestly find it more triggering somehow. Anyways, I'm so sorry guys. One of the big signs that you know Chantal is about to go on a rampage is when she decides to go from no mukbangs and strictly weight loss content to only quote healthy home cooked mukbangs, which always leads to full on fast food binges. And in the wee hours of the 2nd of February, that rampage indeed comes and hasn't stopped at the time of writing this script, which is the 10th of March. Hey guys, I'm not going to sit here and throw a tantrum and all that stuff that is expected of me, but if anything, this is the final straw and I will be going back to doing content I enjoy and working on myself. I am not going to care anymore if others think that is acceptable and you have a right to think that, but that being said, and that will be the last of it, I notice that obese people on YouTube who have weight loss journeys are treated horribly and less than human most times. If you are fed up, fine, unsub and don't watch, but I literally have people telling me to kill myself because I didn't stick to a diet. Regardless of it being annoying, don't watch then, but you are not welcome to comment here and you will simply be blocked. I know I messed up, but it's not a huge deal that warrants this reception. I am still human. It's always the same hateful people who bitch and moan on our videos but still watch just to try and bring us down and they are also the primary audience for most reaction channels. I don't know how any sane individual can't see this, but I'm sick of letting it affect my content. So if you don't like my content, or my attitude, or my farts, or whatever your problem is, hit the road, Jack, and don't you come back no more. I literally saw a reaction channel pause their video in order to criticize how someone was cutting up their vegetables. Over it. LOL. I try not to react to these things as I see them, but it is so hard sometimes not to. See you guys tomorrow, XO. Now this, this is the Chantal I love. Angry, self-contradictory, and set off by the smallest of criticisms. 
All's quiet on the home front for the rest of the day, and on the third, we are graced with another community post where she acknowledges her disordered thinking and proclaims that fast food is back on the menu. I never realized how disordered my thinking was before. For me, it's always one extreme or the other when it comes to diet. I am not saying that I am cured, but I am learning. I have found some great resources combined with therapy that will help me along the way. I will be back later this evening to share a balanced meal with you guys. First step is getting outside help and support. Second is getting rid of the extreme mindset, cleanses, then binges. And the third is to simply start with eating balanced, cooked meals. I am not saying I will never eat out, but instead of ordering fast food three times a day and eating it in secret, I will eat out sparingly, as supposed to be done, for birthdays or special occasions, etc. For birthdays or special occasions? Who's getting fast food for birthdays and special occasions? Chantal thinks that people don't like her and criticize her for her weight, but it's not that. It's the constant lying. In the span of three days, she went from an all-fruit diet and no mukbangs to a healthy, balanced diet with home-cooked mukbangs and no fast food to a diet of uh, mostly cooked meals with occasional fast food. And place your bets now on how long it will be before an on-camera fast food feast. Again, we're only on the third day of the month. She promises a video that evening of a nice, balanced binge, but sadly, the gravy queen does not deliver. She stops by the following evening with a nonsensical post defending her choice of a raw fruit-based diet and says that she only quit because she wouldn't be capable of doing it, not that it wouldn't work in theory. Uh, this is a pointless post. Any diet would work for her in theory. It's that pesky reality that gets in the way. A few hours later, around midnight of the 5th of February, we're treated to this gym. Guess I should have warned you at the beginning of this video, but boys and girls, get your neck braces ready because we're in for some serious whiplash. F, I'm such a mess. All right, I am deleting all of my community posts, starting fresh. I'm also deleting this one too soon, LOL. I feel like somewhere along the way, I lost myself. Like I'm trying to do things so that people won't have anything to laugh at. You want me to be authentic and I will try harder to figure out what that is because I'm not sure I really know what that is. I never did. All I know is that I miss how my channel used to be. This is how your channel has always been, Chantal, from the very beginning. As promised, she purges her entire community post, which means none of the things she posted ever happened. Unless, I don't know, the Patriots over at Kiwi Farms archived literally everything? Finally, on the evening of the 5th of February, we get our first video of the month. A quote, healthy, home-cooked meal consisting of a giant slop heap of broccoli, cheese, cream cheese, and a dainty little chicken breast for her side dish. Other than her admitting to paying for two new god-awful generic Fiverr intros to turn her channel into a cooking show and forgetting to film herself cooking a meal, absolutely nothing of note happens in this video. As we progress through the month, you will see that she never starts that cooking show. Shocking, I know. It's hard to believe that she struggles to get by from paycheck to paycheck. I was gonna give her props for not mentioning farting or pooping, but she must have realized her mistake and pinned a comment to let us know that the broccoli made her IBS flare up. OMG, I has the worst IBS ever from this broccoli dish. Lesson is, no more vegetables, lol. I mean look, I don't have a problem with this statement because for Chantal, vegetables have always been a receptacle for cheese, ranch, or some other sort of fatty dip. Might as well cut out the middleman and save a few pennies. The following day, around midnight, she uploads a vlog with Pete's. She starts off by letting us know that she saw her psychiatrist at the eating disorder clinic, and they told her the same thing the internet did about her fruitarian diet and her dieting habits in general. What I wanted to talk about was just letting you know that, you know, I talked to them a lot about my issues with food and my recent wanting to, you know, go right jump right into fruitarianism and everything else, all, you know, all that stuff. And I don't want to say crazy because I think that I'm not going to dismiss any lifestyle that people choose, but um, they did make me see that, you know, he was like, no, 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 no. Um, why, you know, he's like, why can't you just do what I'm telling you to do? She also lets us know that her binge eating on fast food has gotten so bad that she orders Uber Eats three times per day. It's gotten so bad, like I would like 
order Uber Eats like three times a day. It takes her about 10 minutes of incoherent rambling to finally get into the vlog, and when it starts properly, we are greeted with a bowel movement update. She just can't help herself. I feel so good. I feel uh, cleaned out because TMI, but uh, I spent all night in the bathroom because of that. Ugh, I can't even think of the broccoli without feeling sick. That did a number on my digestive system. Word of the day, digestive system. So I look greasy. She also makes a Freudian slip where she says, No, I'm not getting ready for Pete's and his birthday. It's Pete's birthday today. It really is quite strange to say, No, I'm not getting ready for Pete's. When she is quite literally getting ready to go on a date with Pete's. Who are you trying to convince, Chantal? Is it us? Is it yourself? Is it BB? I don't think you're fooling anyone. Anyways, for dinner, our health-conscious queen orders the smallest order of ribs she possibly can at the restaurant, opting for a nice, healthy vegetable for her side dish. Crazy to think that just seven days ago, she was a strictly raw fruit vegan. <laughs> After their dinner date, they go to the movies where Chantal enjoys a three-course snack. You know, to keep her from binging later on. I got Make more than a living. Be proud of what you do. Smart sweets. Enter the trades. Where you can be proud of what you give. Bill and Cheddar. Proud of what you know. And a be small buttered popcorn and a diet soda. That's about it for her vlog with Pete's, and as always, it left me wondering. How does BB feel about his girlfriend going on a date with her ex-boyfriend? The next day, on the 7th of February, she uploads yet another healthy balanced binge where she consumes several pounds of a one-to-one -one ratio of spaghetti and cheese, as well as two pieces of toast, also drenched in melted cheese. And when I say she ate all of it, I mean she ate every bite. But hey now, at least it's not fast food, and she's only reserving that for birthdays and special occasions. You know what? She might be onto something. Eating a huge meal like this will probably keep her full enough that she won't even think about fast food. Well, that was the theory, but of course that pesky reality had to poke its head out there and screw everything up. An hour after her spaghetti feast fit for a king, she makes a community tab post where she announces that instead of restricting fast food to birthdays and special occasions, she will be limiting herself to three fast food feasts per week. Hey guys, I just want to put this out there so you guys know what's going on and so that I don't need to explain every video. Even though, yes, I know there will still be comments on what I eat and that's just how it is. As someone who ate fast food three times a day, no exaggeration, most days, I think it would be easier on me to eat it three times a week within my calories. I don't know that I want to fully eliminate it. I just don't want to abuse it. I want to find that happy medium. Fast food is everywhere, and 44.9% of people eat fast food every day. Avoiding it entirely is very difficult. Your entire job is eating, Chantal. That's all you do. Avoiding fast food is not difficult. I don't want it to be a daily thing, but for now, I think going from three times a day to three times a week is reasonable, provided I stay within my calories and eat healthy food daily. I have been four days now without any binge eating, and that is a victory for me, and a goal I feel good about because I don't feel deprived. It feels weird, but not in a bad way. Kind of like moving to a new location and getting used to everything. Soon, the no binge eating will be my new normal, and then I can focus on another goal. Thank you for understanding, and sorry for the whiplash. LOL, XO. Look Chantel, you can apologize for the whiplash all you want, but I'm in America, and apologies don't pay the doctor bills. Chantal often likes to proclaim the difficulties of being addicted to food as opposed to being addicted to drugs or alcohol because unlike them, she has to keep partaking in her drug of choice to stay alive. I'd like to take that argument into consideration right now because I know she's watching. Chantal, you aren't addicted to salads. You're addicted to fast food, cheese, and grease. Saying that you have to indulge in your drug of choice or else you will starve to death is like an alcoholic saying he needs the occasional beer or else he'll die of dehydration. She puts out a sponsored video that I skipped because uh, who cares, and then takes to the community tab to rage at all the people who didn't agree with her decision to start binging on fast food again, pulling the classic if you don't like it, don't watch. 
Keep in mind, she is fully cognizant of how annoying her flip-flopping is, and even apologized for the whiplash a few hours ago in her last community post. I'm not gonna read this whole wall of text, I'm tired of the novels, but suffice it to say that if everyone who only watches her for the train wreck left, she'd pull about a thousand views per video. But then, early on the morning of the 8th day of February, the year of our lord, 2020, it happens. My main man, BB, decides to terminate his contract, and Chantal announces this is the last season in which he will be appearing. Jokes aside, here's my serious analysis of what went wrong. Chantal said she was more in love with BB than anyone in her entire life, and the first five years of their relationship were great. However, the last three years, things haven't been so good, and she chalks this up to how psychologically damaged she is. Personally, I think it might have something to do with the fact that the timeline of their relationship declining correlates directly with her quitting her job and starting her YouTube channel full time. I believe YouTube and her refusal to work were probably what destroyed their relationship. The few times BB has been on camera, he's hated it. BB may hate social media, specifically YouTube, but that doesn't mean he's ignorant of it. It's one thing to not want to be associated with your significant other's online activities, but if Chantal were my girlfriend and she behaved this way on the internet, if it were bleeding into our real lives and having a profound and negative effect on her mental health, if she refused to get a real job in favor of feeding into a toxic, toxic pit of her own creation while I was paying the bills, I would tell her, and I would have told her a long time before BB did, that either YouTube goes or I do. Actually, now that I think about it, it's probably because she wouldn't stop hanging out with her creepy ex-boyfriend. Probably 10% the first thing I said, 90% her weird relationship with Pete's. Speaking of which... I might move back in with Pete's as roommates. We were roommates before, we work well together, you could do videos with me. Gotta have someone to pay the bills while you sit at home stuck in your cycle of eating food for the camera just to be able to afford food to eat for the camera. You know, life is expensive, and Pete's really needs to get his own place. Like, he doesn't really have his own place right now. Um, he's living with somebody. Her new concerns for Pete's living situation seems pretty convenient. Watches Chantal lets him pay all the bills when they move in together while she hits on every man in arm's reach, including yours truly, as you can see under episode one of this illustrious series. She uploads a second video on the 8th, this time in the evening, where she details her plan of separating from BB and moving in with Pete's. She sucks down two eggs and a tray of sushi drenched in soy sauce with a steaming hot cup of miso soup as her beverage, which is basically the Japanese equivalent of gravy. The weirdest part is that she is planning to move out April 1st, which leads me to believe this relationship has been over for a long, long time. Continuing to live with your ex after you've broken up is unhealthy and weird, to say the least, but it's not surprising coming from someone who spends an inordinate amount of time with their former fiancé. There's been a long-running rumor that BB's sister, who lived with him for a time, was his actual girlfriend, and this clip pretty much solidifies that rumor for me. So I'm going to aim to move out April 1st. Just give me time to organize everything and find a good place with Pete. And, um... Because BB's sister is going to come back, I think, from Africa in April. And they're probably going to stay here for a while. I don't know how he's going to manage that. It's going to be awful, like, with our memories here. But I know I couldn't do it. Why would it be difficult to live in a house with your sister after your girlfriend moved out? Especially for someone as stoic as Bibi. This seems like projection from Chantal. 
The rest of the video is her just assuring us that her relationship with Pete's is completely platonic. But when has Chantal's word ever held any weight? On the subject of Pete's, it's time for a pleasant little detour. Now when I say Pete's is a simp, it's not a meme or speculation. Kiwi Farms user Season Salt dug up a few tweets from Pete's in 2017, revealing that since their breakup nearly a decade ago at this point, Chantal has been using him as a personal ATM. That feel when it's been six years since someone broke your heart and you're still giving them money. My fiance broke up with me six years ago. We started off as friends before we dated, so we stayed friends when we broke up. And in the past eight years, she's borrowed tons of money, only rarely paying anything back. And unfortunately, I'm bad at saying no to her. So I just gave her another $200 for her shitty cat who sucks. Pretty much everyone has speculated that she was emotionally manipulating Pete's and we were all sure of it. But this is just concrete evidence. I don't feel sorry for him though, because in true simp fashion, when these tweets were brought into the mainstream public discourse by noted Chantologist on program situation, Pete's came to defend his lady's honor. And it's everything I could have ever dreamed of. The day after Chantal announces her breakup with BB and her intention to move in with Pete's, on program situation tweets out the images with the caption, People on Kiwi Farms found these old tweets from Pete's. He's really screwing himself over becoming a roommate. The next day at four in the morning, Pete's makes his reply. Prepare yourselves. We got a real badass over here. Hey. 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 Go fuck yourself. Mind your own business. Don't try dragging me into your drama bullshit. I have even less patience for it than Chantel does. You want to talk shit about her? You're an idiot, but whatever. But you don't know me. So don't use my words against her. The ensuing back and forth results in the complete and utter destruction of Pete's. I actually didn't think this through when I shared it from the Kiwi Farms thread, so like, fair outrage. Sorry, I guess we both didn't think some tweets through, eh? Now at this point, any normal man would have recognized that the day was not his, but Pete's is no normal man. He is a knight in shining white armor, and he is compelled to defend his lady. I was venting about shit going on in my own life. You're gossiping about others' lives. We are not the same. You know what that is? That's the bottled up rage he can never let out on his queen. Unfortunately, he picked the wrong target and on program situation, nukes him from orbit with this one. Definitely, I don't talk shit about my friends. Pizza's left the chat. Now, a sure sign that you've lost on the internet is when you have to tell everyone how much you don't care. Because if you didn't care, you wouldn't have gotten the argument in the first place. And that's exactly what our dynamic duo did. Hey hey, just want to put a general statement out there. Seems Pete's and I are getting a bunch more attention lately in the form of terribly bored individuals digging up old tweets, my LinkedIn, etc. And all I have to say about this is, one, Pete's doesn't do drama, and two, Knock yourselves out, lol. Hey, it's your free time and no skin off our asses. At this point, there is nothing you can do or say about me anywhere that really affects me like it used to. Pete's was never one to give a crap what other people think or say about him, something I've always admired. So to those messaging for a response to every reaction video or to every thread made about me out there, you aren't gonna get any, except for this, eat up. But really, does anyone else not think it's kind of creepy and weird that people who claim to be functional human beings, why else would you have the balls to criticize anyone else? Go in forums all day and obsess over old tweets or the business of someone they can't stand? LOL. Anyways, that's my general answer to all of this nonsense. See you guys tomorrow for another video. I'm sure after making this, Chantel put her phone down and enjoyed her day. She definitely didn't spend the entire day like she does every other day, moderating her YouTube comments, reading her Kiwi Farms thread, and watching every video made about her. Hi Chantel. On the same day, she put out another healthy home-cooked binge video called Ham and Cheese Grilled Cheese, which anyone with a functioning understanding of the English language would just call a grilled ham and cheese. She admits that this meal is a cheat meal and that she is over her calories. There's also no trace of either of her impulse buy Fiverr intros and no signs of starting a cooking show. Money well spent. Her meal consists of the titular entree, several quarts of orange soda, and probably a pound of olives. She tells us that she's worried that she won't be able to stick to her diet at all once she moves in with Pete's. And I can't let it get out of control because when I move in with Pete's, it'll be so easy. 
It'll be so easy. I have no doubt that once she moves in with him, she will become even bigger than ever before. Back when they lived together as boyfriend and girlfriend, Chantal spent so much money on fast food that she went into debt. I'm not trying to insult or poke fun at Chantal here either. In her own words, I have to really watch it. I have to find something else to turn to because before I know it, he'll be hosing me down or washing me down with a rag. And I don't want that. The rest of the video is just her moaning the blues about her breakup, which, you know, is understandable. The following evening, we are treated to another vlog with Pete's. The title of the video, Wendy's Mukbang at a Haunted Mansion. And it ain't called that because they've got a third friend joining them named Wendy. That's right, fast food is back in the rotation. Despite being at a haunted mansion, they don't actually go in. They walk around the outside for a few moments and then dig into the meal. Chantel goes with a sensible option that will no doubt fit within her diet. I got a spicy chicken burger here. The lighting is horrible. You probably won't even be able to see the food, really. Can't see it. And I got a chili cheese baked potato. So just one of their baked potatoes topped with uh, probably just a scoop of chili, some cheese. Oh my god, it looks good. Let's try this here. The majority of the video is just Chantal droning on about ghosts and writhing in ecstasy over how delicious her food is. But towards the end, we get some great health and nutrition advice from Pete's. Yep. And don't bother dieting. Diets are bullshit. Oh yeah. But it's not, I mean, this not What like diets do is... Cause eating disorders. <laughs> screw up your diet. Uh, screw up your body. Yeah. <laughs> because your body doesn't know whether you're starving or uh, well fed. So... Yeah, you're right. The next day, we get a video titled Weigh In and Health Updates, which I thoroughly enjoyed. I love seeing her stats in the upper right hand corner of the screen, and I wish they were the stock standard for all mukbangers. She weighs in at a suspiciously low 383 pounds. Despite being on a diet since New Year's, she is still hovering at, to quote her, her heaviest weight. I will note that the standard digital scales are only rated for accuracy up to 400 pounds. Hey guys, so I just thought I would do a weigh in. Um, more, I did that more for myself than anything else. I didn't do it just to be criticized all over the internet. Um, now, it's been a while since I've weighed myself and I should have weighed myself um, a while ago because I don't really know what my starting point was. Um, so I'm just going with that, the last time I weighed myself. No, this isn't just for you. No one uploads YouTube videos just for themselves. You want attention, money, and you want to use people criticizing you as a scapegoat for your own failure. Chantal tries to treat this weigh-in as if it's a victory and claims 387 pounds as her previous weight, but the last time she weighed herself was months and months before New Year's, so there's no way to tell if she has actually lost or gained weight from her, uh, <clears throat> diet. She assumes she has and is quite proud of herself. Personally, I wouldn't be impressed with losing half a percent of my own body weight over the course of a month and a half. At her size, that's probably negligible and can be written off as water weight fluctuation. But again, she didn't know her starting weight in the first place, so likely, she's only gained. Despite no longer caring what other people have to say about her, the next day on the 13th, she deletes her Instagram because she was annoyed with what other people were saying about her. She continues her weight loss journey by traveling two and a half hours to the US so she can try Sonic and Chick-fil-A. Good morning, guys. It is very, very early here, and uh, on Thursday morning, I want to get a head start on possible traffic and just getting to where I want to go. Today, I have a very special surprise for you guys, and for myself as well, because I have not ever had the opportunity to eat at these places, um, and, you know, Canada has different fast food than the U.S., so I am driving to Watertown, New York today to check out... Um, Sonic and then I'm gonna drive another hour away to Cicero New York and I'm going to uh, try Chick-fil-a and I'm so excited I also want to kind of get a coffee at Dunkin Donuts as well sorry for the shakiness um, so yeah now as you will recall Chantel has decided to limit her fast food intake to three times per week because she used to eat it three times per day and coming off a of fast food cold turkey can have serious side effects 
Unfortunately, these two meals make for a total of four fast food feasts that we know of for the week. One being an off-camera binge on the 10th, which is a Monday, her Wendy's mukbang with Pete's, the two she's about to travel to, and we might as well make it five in total because when she goes to Dunkin' Donuts for a coffee, she gets what is essentially a blended up dessert meal. She splits the video into two, releasing the Sonic binge first and the Chick-fil-A binge the second day. Don't let the fact that they were released separately fool you though, these videos took place mere hours apart. There isn't much substance to the videos, aside from Chantal unabashedly slurping down a chili cheese dog, chili cheese tots, another side order of tots, a sugary drink from Sonic, a lemonade from Chick-fil-A, a spicy chicken sandwich, an order of waffle fries, six grilled nuggets, four packets of sauce, and a giant sugar and fat filled coffee from Dunkin' Donuts. All said, the total calorie count is in excess of 4,000. While the videos themselves lacked any real substance, her pinned comments delivered. On the Sonic video, she pins a comment raging at the haters for pointing out the fact that she just drove two and a half hours to binge while yesterday she was giving us a health update. Guess her brief period of not being bothered by what other people say is over. That lasted about as long as her fruitarian diet. Listen, if you are just here to try and shame me for eating this, you can just go away. I am 35 and as I said in my previous videos, I have chosen not to fully eliminate fast food. I've been eating it and still lost some weight. You can call it deny it, blah blah blah, and react to it all you want. It is my choice, my body, my channel, and my journey, and this is how I am choosing to go about it at the moment. Your approval is not needed. Worry about what you put in your body, not mine. And I only drove all the way because I like going for drives and thought it would make good content. Don't think so? Don't watch. Simple. I love how Chantal builds up these straw men to attack and justify her addiction. No one has told her she can't do any of these things. People just reflect her own actions into her face. It's no one's fault but her own that she hates her own reflection, and no amount of blaming others for her own behavior will help her sleep at night. In the pinned comment beneath her Chick-fil-A video, she sees about people mocking her driving two and a half hours for fast food. You know, a lot of people are making fun of me for traveling two and a half hours for food. And what? Fight me, bitch. On the 15th, she uploads another fast food feast, bringing the total for the week to six. This time, she visits A&W and brings home a haul of onion rings, french fries, a chicken sandwich, a mozzarella burger, four small tubs of ranch, a large glob of garlic aioli, and a root beer. She tells a story involving her period as a young girl, going into great detail because it just isn't a classic binge unless she's talking about her bodily functions. The next day continues as you would expect with a family-sized tub of vegetarian slop and a giant piece of carrot cake from a local restaurant. She tries to justify this as a healthy meal because it's made from scratch, but it's effectively another fast food binge. She actually talks about her plans for weight loss as though she isn't completely off the wagon. Talk of the gym, getting her cardio up, it's just sad, and it upsets her viewers. She's entitled to do whatever she wants, and in truth, I find it supremely hilarious, but your average person hates being lied to. The following day on the 17th, by the grace of God Almighty, she actually cooks her own food. Unfortunately, it's two giant Italian roast beef sandwiches slathered in cheese and butter, and the remainder of a bag of chips she devoured before the camera started rolling, but you know, not a binge. The video marks the return of Mystery Mondays because the best way to break into an easy genre like regurgitating old crime documentaries to stay-at-home moms is to do it while jamming thousands and thousands of calories into your mouth. The following evening, we finally see her crash back down to reality, or at least as close to reality as Chantal can get at any given moment. A big thanks to the denizens of the beauty parlor over at Kiwi Farms for snatching this up and archiving it before it was deleted. The video is a raw look behind the curtains of what Chantal's life has really become because of her addiction to fame and food. Chantal's addiction has gotten so bad that she is actually incapable of performing basic physical tasks. She went to see an apartment with Pete's and was immediately set off because the apartment that was available to them was located across the parking lot, a distance so great that she had to stop for a break in between the leasing office and her destination, and once she got there, being incapable of using elevators because of crippling claustrophobia, she realized that climbing the four flights of stairs was a feat well beyond her limits. Uh, we get to the building, and I had to stop at a bus stop midway. I'm like, I need to catch my breath, so they're just waiting. And I'm like, oh my god, could this get any worse? Like, really? So she's like, it's on the fourth floor. So I'm like, I'm gonna take the stairs. I get into the staircase, and 
I look up and I'm like, oh, there's too many stairs. Like after what I just went through. Her mobility has become so limited that by the time she walked back to her car, she was feeling the same effects I would feel after about an hour of very intense cardio. By the time I got to my car, I was ready to collapse. Like my legs were like rubber. My lungs were on fire. I had the worst headache. I was dizzy. I thought I was gonna pass out. <sighs> From walking a couple of blocks. This is not okay. She's also very upset that she has to live in a poor part of town. The thing is, is like, Ottawa is an expensive city. And I'm pretty much going to be going from one shithole to another shithole. Because um, the only thing affordable in a city like this is a shithole. A high rise shithole. Yeah, that's the only thing that's going to be affordable in a city. In this city. Is something like that. Something like what I'm living in now. So. She talks extensively about how everything is a trigger for her to binge, as if no one understands how addiction works. My personal favorite is this. I would need, I feel like I need to move to like a different country where there's like no fast food. Where there's like, life isn't just shit, you know? Ugh. It's just like everything. Going out, going out is a trigger. Yeah, a country with no fast food, where life isn't just shit. Imagine Chantal up and moving to a third world country one day because of fast food. Better yet, imagine if fast food just disappeared one day out of the blue. This is the biggest reality check Chantal is ever going to face in her life. At some point, she will manage to stop eating fast food for a temporary yet prolonged amount of time. Probably a month, two at most. She will be absolutely certain that the pounds will start falling off, only to slowly realize the harsh truth. That her home-cooked meals might take more effort to prepare than a few clicks on Uber Eats, but the result of eating 2,000 calories per meal and never leaving your bedroom will always be the same. She tells us that she went to a nice dinner with Pete's, whose obvious goal is to secure an apartment with her and then feed her to immobility so she'll never be able to leave him again. Afterwards, she went on one of her patented binge cruises and then, for the first time in her life, she claims she forced herself to throw it all back up. I went to dinner with Pete's, ate a shit meal, nothing healthy. Then on the way home after I dropped him off, because I didn't feel like that was enough, I guess, I went to Popeye's and I had like a five piece chicken meal, with like two sides, and then I went to McDonald's. And I threw it all up. She also admits to lying to herself about fast food. When I lie to myself, just remember this video. And I'll try to do the same. I don't know how I'm supposed to to keep this mindset when I don't trust myself. You know? It's like I have this mindset now and then it changes. Like the next day I'm like totally convincing myself that eating fast food is okay. She then goes on a tirade about not having the option of inpatient treatment. So the, so inpatient treatment is like here, it's like... Eating disorder program is for anorexics and bulimics who are severely at risk of dying from malnourishment. That's what the inpatient treatment is. I'm part of the outpatient program. I get no fucking help as an obese person because it's for anorexics and bulimics. She even floats the idea of starting a GoFundMe for a trip to rehab, which I'm sure she wouldn't spend on fast food and shopping. I honestly was like tempted to start a GoFundMe to go to like a rehab facility because they're expensive. Probably like thousands of dollars, I don't even know. 
the website, a lot of them don't even tell you the price. That should tell you how much it's going to cost. Just out of desperation, I was like, I don't know what to do. The entire video is 100% just her blaming the entire world for her own problems. Nothing new. A few hours later, around midnight of the 19th, she posts a picture of her leg, and I'm no doctor, but things are looking very, very bad for Chantal. Her comments urged her to seek medical attention. A few hours after this, she disables comments on her videos and posts an update saying she plans to see a doctor about her legs later in the day. She promises an update video in the evening, and she delivers. It's mostly just her usual pie-in-the-sky plans to tackle her problems from a new angle. Finding a new therapist, promises of another 30-day weight loss journey, and claiming that Pete's is now going to help keep her in check by not literally fetching her food as he used to and forcing her to split the bills evenly. And I'm going to be trying to be completely independent because I don't want to move from here back in with Pete's and be dependent on him financially everything. I've already talked to him. Um, he knows my struggles. He realizes it more now because I've taught, I've opened up to him a lot more about it than when we were living together. So he won't be fetching me junk. He won't be um, lenient. I'm going to be paying my half of everything. You know, I don't want to do that to him. I have been more financially dependent on him in the past. But now I just want to be completely independent. And that's a big, big change, you know? I, for one, have extreme doubts about this. Again, she admits that eating food for the camera is destructive behavior and details a plan to change her content to travel vlogs. Um, but just eating on camera, I think I understand that. And I've, I know I've said this before. But I think it's a destructive behavior for me, so I think f doing different things with my channel, like actual vlogs and like using that, using those resources I have for mukbangs on maybe doing like travel and um, exploring city, the city, doing different things. This video is accompanied by a thinly veiled rage comment where she uses a foolproof method to silence her critics, lecturing them. The next day is the 20th, and it marks the beginning of the biggest meltdown of the year for Chantal to date. On her community tab, she shares a video from an account called Fatty Gold, which is an obvious troll account that is a play on Charlie Gold's name, with the rather obvious intention of roping the likes of Chantal and similar channels into a honeypot. Chantal sees a video critical of her biggest detractors and immediately throws her full support behind them without any research or vetting, or even watching the majority of the videos. Her post with the link reads, I told you, all hypocrites. Especially Charlie, who offered Amber Lynn a weight loss challenge and hasn't lost weight this year. 310 pounds isn't far from 387, Charlie. Please, take a seat. This is such an obvious trap, it's embarrassing. Fatty Gold's avatar was a gorilla, an obvious race-based dig at Charlie, and attempts to discredit another reaction channel called Alex is Shook because he has a drug addiction that he's been dealing with. Now. I spend a good majority of my time in the seedier parts of the internet. It's where you find the best entertainment. So none of this stuff really phases me. I don't care what people on the internet say. And I know it will only result in easy money for the people she lashes out at. But the people who watch Chantal and the tea community in general are very progressive, as Chantal herself claims to be. The entire intention of the Fatty Gold channel was to stir the pot and put a target on Chantal's back for accusations of racism and homophobia, and it worked perfectly. These things were immediately brought to Chantal's attention, and she promptly deletes the post, replacing it with this one. I deleted the picture of the post, but all hypocrites. My opinion remains the same, lol. This is a great, healthy way to occupy her time while she is mere bites away from becoming immobile because she refuses to make any serious efforts to improve her life. Local bridge troll Shani Hard R for Christ also stops by to deliver Charlie's dogs, but Chantal just has too much class to bring up someone's personal life that they haven't made public. I really don't give a crap about her arrest, that is her business. What I care about is her being morbidly obese, also and bullying Amber Lynn and criticizing me for our weight struggles. 
Just a little bit of punctuation goes a long way, Chantal, it really does. It's not easy reading everything you post in a month. Could you take my feelings into consideration for once, please? Thank you. Later that day, she releases a video no one could possibly care about called Apartment Hunting After a Breakup. The first four minutes is a story about, in her words, Harry from Dumb and Dumber style explosive diarrhea. There's without a doubt that he would be able to hear everything that was going on in that bathroom. And when I say I had to go to the bathroom, it was like... Harry from Dumb and Dumber kind of bathroom situation, all right? So, um, I felt bad, but hey, I gotta go. So I can't be too bothered by the guy in his quest sandwich. So I, I go to the bathroom, I come out, and I'm just like, oh my God, I so, feel so guilty for ruining his quest sandwich moment. I look over and he was giving me stink eye. With the remainder of the video being related to her apartment hunt with Pete's. I just so happened to check online the app that I'm checking my for listings on. Smack right <laughs> right on the first page. It was like it's in the suburbs. So I drove I, I drove out to look at it today, but I didn't go for an actual viewing. I have a viewing scheduled with Pete on on Tuesday because that's when he's off and can go. But it's just like it's everything I want. Like it's in the it's in an area that I've always wanted to live in, in the suburbs. Um, so it's a bit more expensive, but it's actually still affordable. You know what I mean? Um, I'll just have to be frugal. That's all. This is a woman who we know is helplessly addicted to food, and by her own admission, spends at least three hundred dollars a week eating out. The odds of her changing her lifelong habits and suddenly becoming frugal are statistically zero. But the odds of Pete's picking up a second job to support her are very high. My disappointment at this video was also very high, as I was anticipating a full-blown rage, but a few hours later, presumably after a binge cruise, she delivers and uploads the Charlie Gold rant. It's important to note that Charlie had been pretty much ignoring Chantal up until this point, with the occasional video few and far between. Now before we even take a look at the video, you will notice something a bit strange. Despite Chantal claiming Charlie's business is her own business, she uses Charlie's mugshot in the thumbnail. I will note, as someone who spends a lot of time making quality thumbnails, the crop job she did looks like it was done by a toddler. She spends the entire video whining about the fact that Charlie is obese, though significantly less so than herself, which in her mind makes it hypocritical for her to make videos about the circus that is Chantal's online presence. And I don't really give a shit if she's been arrested. I don't care about, oh, that's none of my business. What I was interested in is her weight on the mugshot. And it was like 310 pounds or something like that. I've seen people say, well, at least she's still 70 pounds lighter than you. It doesn't matter. She's still morbidly obese and she's been bigger than me, which means she has struck. She is struggling still. She's not thin. She's not a, a, a epitome of health. She's still somebody who struggles with weight issues. And for her to comment on the size of my underwear or to fat shame me or Amber Lynn is just ridiculous. And that's always been what I had an issue with. This really is a testament to how delusional Chantal is. For over a year, she has been regularly raging about the fact that many of the people who cover her are also obese. And every time the effect is exactly the same. No one cares. We aren't blind and it's not as if any of these YouTubers are keeping it a secret. I've said it before, I'll say it again. Chantal, the reason you get so much negative attention online isn't because you're fat, it's because you are dishonest, bitter, vindictive, and you can't speak for more than a minute straight without lying. Chantal likes to talk about how cruel Charlie's videos are and she is very harsh, but it didn't start off that way. If you watched my video, The Canadian Horror Story, you will remember that Charlie's initial criticisms of Chantal were very mild and respectful. It was only after Chantal went on a manic tirade, making community post after community post talking about Charlie's weight, calling her a bully and a hypocrite, saying she would have no content if it weren't for girls like Chantal, that Charlie decided to take off the gloves, so to speak. Chantal also suggests that Alex is shook, shouldn't be able to criticize her because he struggles with a drug addiction. A class act as always. It's just like, it's like an alcoholic coming on here and shaming someone else for having an addiction, which there is a reaction channel who is, a, is an addict who has the nerve to, to, to talk about someone else's addictions. 
it's just like, do people not, do 122,000 people not see that? I think they do, but I think that they like, people love when people are hating on other people in videos. Now, the argument that obese people shouldn't be allowed to criticize other obese people is absurd on its face, but I will humor Chantal. Is Charlie obese? Absolutely. But if you go to her channel right now, you can find a video of her at the end of January training in boxing for one of her workout vlogs. Chantal, you can't walk across the parking lot and up a flight of stairs without coming to the point of complete exhaustion and collapse. You can't go one day without eating fast food. You and Charlie are not on the same level health-wise. You aren't even on the same plane of existence. Charlie has never made the fact that she used to act the same way as Chantel and Amber a secret. My hot take on this video is that Chantal wanted to make Charlie feel bad the way she herself feels bad when people make videos about her. Unfortunately, all she succeeded in doing was giving Charlie free money. Congrats Chantal, you really played yourself good this time. The comments have been disabled for this video, but a few screenshots are available on Kiwi Farms of Chantel continuing her meltdown via text. My favorite is this. And don't come for me about the picture I put of her in my thumbnail. It is pretty lenient compared to what unflattering pics she uses. No sympathy. I'm not gonna come at you for sharing someone's personal private information, Chantal. I really don't care. I'm glad you feel the same way, so in the future, when I no longer keep certain aspects of your story off the table because I feel they're too private, I want you to remember the comments you made. Chantal goes on to pin about half a dozen more comments on the Charlie Gold rant video before disabling the comments section. It's such a cowardly way of communication. Go from website to website, video to video, forum to forum, seeing what people are saying about you, but only responding on your own channel where you have the power to make their comments disappear. The next day she makes a community post telling the people accusing her of being racist to eat a bag of dicks, which I'm sure really helped her case. She makes a post the following day on the 22nd stating that she's done with the haters, which really upset me because where will I get my content when she starts acting like an adult? Editing vlog now was out later than expected. I will also no longer be giving any of the ridiculous nonsense rumors any more attention. Yes, I have made comments on some reaction channels that were not nice and I don't feel bad. Don't cry victim when I bite back and defend myself against your daily bullshit criticism and bullying. These channels comment sections are full of vile hatred towards me. VILE! Yet two people make hateful comments towards a reaction channel in my comment section and I get blamed for it and called a racist and a homophobe? I don't know why I'm even giving this BS any of my precious time, but I have no interest in talking to a brick wall. Dismissed! And I am sorry my loyal followers had to see this. Now, generally speaking, accusing someone of being racist because of the comments on their channel is something I would not co-sign because I myself do not moderate any of my comments. But Chantal combs through and reads every comment on her channel and deletes the ones critical of her, so these accusations aren't completely out of line. That being said, I personally do not think Chantal is a racist. To me, a racist is someone who harbors genuine hatred of others because of their heritage, and that isn't what is going on with Chantal. Chantal will take the side of literally anyone who defends her, and those are few and far between, and as a general rule, severely mentally ill. Just search Shanny for Christ on YouTube or Kiwi Farms if you need an example. Chantal doesn't ally herself with these people because of their racism, but she actively ignores it because having someone on her side helps to justify her own delusions. In reality, it just reveals how truly narcissistic she is. This is just my opinion though, and I'm not gonna be the Chantal defense force if the people who have been targeted by the people she associates with want to level that accusation at her. She uploads two videos that day, the first being the aforementioned vlog from the previous day because she was too busy patrolling comment sections in Kiwi Farms to actually sit down and edit. I mean, she did the sitting down part of course, but the editing was just too much work. The vlog is called Escaping My Problems for a Day and it's your typical Chantel content. She decides to take a road trip to escape her problems, which makes no sense because it's not as if she ever addresses her problems in the first place. She starts the morning out by prepping for the drive with the essentials, a nice large order of fast food to tide her over until she can get to the destination. All right, so I picked up Popeyes for the way there. It's just like, um, I'll show you guys, chicken sandwich. It's not the Popeyes chicken sandwich that they have in the US. We don't have that yet. Although I hear it's coming to Canada. It's just, uh, I'll show you. 
comes with fries. Um, this is the Creole chicken sandwich, so it's like a Creole sauce apparently. Tomatoes and lettuce and chicken patty and like a diamond shaped bun, but it's really soft. Unfortunately, she didn't sufficiently prepare for the trip and had to make a pit stop at Starbucks to tide her over for the rest of her journey. Okay, I had to stop <laughs> midway here. My hair's so staticky to Kempville. I think that's the name of this place, just for Starbucks break, bathroom break. And I got a um, strawberry assay lemonade, extra ice. A bottle of water and a couple snacks for me and I got some of BB's favorites too for him. Med Lens, he loves these. She pulls over again to complain about how bad her life is and instead drives to her mother's house. She arrives and I'm assuming eats before going to the casino, where I assume she also eats before leaving to go back home, but not before picking up some snacks for the road. Okay, so I'm just gonna end the video. I got some snacks for the way home. So I'm actually really hungry. It's been like hours. But I picked up, can't find these where I am. Some combos, pizza combos. Yeah, I know, healthy. I'm sure there were two or three more pit stops before she finally made it home in time for dinner. Her second video of the day is another fast food mukbang binge, featuring a flatbread pizza, a chicken teriyaki noodle dish for two, and some garlic bread. All of this is consumed while doing the worst possible job of trying to debunk the recent allegations against her. She defends the comments she manually approves by displaying some of the comments on Charlie's videos. People will come at me if one to two people leave hateful comments against a reaction channel in my comments, like I'm responsible for them, their words. But who, what about, have you read the comment sections in reaction channels? Uh, they're, they're, it's vile. It's disgusting. It's just like, it's, I've never seen this before. So don't come for me for that. Anyway. I would have to say that making jokes about someone is a far cry from linking back to their docs, but that's just me. She defends using Charlie's mugshot by saying Charlie uses unflattering pictures of her, ignoring the fact that the unflattering pictures Charlie uses all come from her own uploads. And with the way she eats on camera, it would be rather difficult to find a picture I would consider flattering. Which some people took issue with me using her mugshot in my picture, but have you seen the picture she uses of us? I'm sorry. If she can do it, why can't I, you know? Does it, like, it's just like, oh man. Anyway. She claims ignorance of any racism whatsoever because she's just so not racist that she doesn't even know what racist jokes are. Apparently that YouTube channel uses their profile picture. It's an exposing Charlie channel. And they use, the profile picture they used was that of like a gorilla. Which, I think I briefly saw it. I didn't really pay attention, like I said, to the profile picture. I didn't equate, I didn't put two and two together because some people use that as a form of racism, saying, you know, people of color resemble primates. That's what the whole thing was, apparently. I didn't put two and two together because I don't think that. I don't see the correlation at all. She complains about being held accountable for her own comment section when people don't complain about over-the-top comments and reaction channels comment sections, but as I have already addressed, and she mentions in the video, she moderates every comment, so it's like comparing apples to oranges. She reiterates the same complaints about Charlie before making two of the most absurd claims to come out of her mouth in uh, recent memory. The first being that if you look at her channel, 90% of her comments are positive and claims she only has to remove about 10% of the ones that are critical. Many people have watched in real time as Chantal falls asleep after posting a video and the comment section remains unmoderated, only to lose hundreds upon hundreds of comments the following day when she wakes up and goes to work deleting and blocking. This can also be seen on any video where the like to dislike ratio isn't disabled. The second is that she receives more hate than PewDiePie or Jeffree Star. Now, I'm not saying, you know, criticism and stuff like that, parodies, are not okay. Um, 
Anyone in the public eye is subject to criticism, sure. But when you're a smaller channel and you get more than PewDiePie or Jeffree Star, it's just at this point, it's like just somebody ganging up on like an individual. The following day, around midnight of the 23rd, Charlie finally puts out her response, which I will link in the description. The last time I checked, it was fully monetized and at almost 200,000 views, meaning Charlie took this whole situation Chantal made and paid her bills for the next month. Chantal responds exactly how you would expect in her community tab section. I don't want to hear about Charlene or any of these other pathetic bully leeches anymore on my channel. Your comments will be blocked and deleted, and you will be blocked as I have been doing anyways. Sad how she is barely back from jail and has to save face and make a retaliation video her priority. She gets to make fun of Amberlynn and I and all of her videos, but we don't have the right to defend ourselves. Fuck that. Keep flapping your gum at our expense. The tide will turn on you soon. I could give two shits about you, but my name will always be in your mouth because without my content, you have none yourself. This idea that she isn't allowed to defend herself is absurd. Chantel, people are allowed to make videos about you and you are allowed to make videos about them. Trying to control other people's response to either is something a child would do. She follows that up rapid fire with another community post insinuating Charlie's video will be removed by YouTube's new guidelines. Quote, Canadian pig. Name calling is bullying under the new guidelines. It's hilarious that you are so triggered and mad that you have to throw low blows and show your true colors as a fat, shaming bully. I didn't insult anyone in my two videos giving my opinion. What's wrong? Can dish it, but obviously can't take it? Grow up. Chantel continues to go insane in the comments before uploading her own video in response, this time in the style of parody channels who overlay text on the screen while clipping together videos. I'll play it for you. The cheese curds have traveled from her vagina into her brain and she can't think. So to them, to those forums, and more importantly, to my subscribers, thank you. Happy Black History Month. I'm not going anywhere. Everyone's aware of the video that our amazing Canadian bacon thick cut Canadian bacon Chantel has released addressing me. I did see the video because I was part of Zach's live stream. I did view it. So it's not an authentic, you know, reaction. However, I still have some thoughts being spread by a lot of people, mostly the trashy Trinity, which includes our Canadian bacon Chantel, um, Shani for Satan, and their dog. The cheese curds have traveled from her vagina into her brain. <laughs> Um, and I'm happy actually Zach pointed this out in his live stream. Keep in mind, I haven't reacted to Chantel in about three weeks. I, I feel like part of this is the fact she feels left out and she really thinks she got one, but she failed miserably. Just keep that in mind. I haven't reacted to this woman in three weeks and she's put out several mukbangs, several videos since. Send your prayers to Charlie. I'm sure she was devastated. She then stops by Charlie's video and leaves this little gym. Looks like Kiwi Farms is talking about you too, boo boo, LMAO. Charlie fake gold, the nerve. I mean, we didn't really need her to come out and say it to know that she lurks heavy, but there it is. And yeah, Kiwi Farms does talk about Charlie. They also talk about me and pretty much everyone on the internet. I'm glad you enjoy the content as well, my fellow Kiwi. Being extremely exhausted from the exertion of leaving comments and editing together her minute-long counter to Charlie's video, Chantal puts out a mukbang that evening. A large tub of fettuccine, bruschetta, and mozzarella sticks, all brought to her by DoorDash. She turns a rage onto the restaurant, complaining about her meal to get her food for free, most likely as a way to cope with the fact that she has no power anywhere else in her life. She ignores the drama, talking about basically nothing for the majority of the video, sucking down every bite of the food she found so repulsive. A few hours go by and around midnight of the 24th, she changes tactics in her war against Charlie by doing some good old pity posting. I find it discouraging to see how many people liked Charlie Gold's video about me despite it being so disrespectful. I did nothing to deserve that treatment from anyone in my video about her. I did not insult her. I calmly and respectfully defended myself and gave my opinion. Apparently, it's acceptable to the public and to YouTube to allow this behavior towards other creators. The same people liking her video for calling me a pig, etc. are the same ones who accuse me of being a bad person. It's sad that so many support online bullying. I hope one day it changes, but until then, Charlie, guess you win. Congratulations. 
You're such an inspiration. Well, I guess I can say I'm ahead of these leeches because I would rather be talked about than the irrelevant ones doing the talking. No matter what you say, at the end of the day, without me or Amberlynn or anyone to pick apart, love or hate, you would be nothing on YouTube. And being called fat by another fat person is absolutely ridiculous. I can and I will lose weight. You are nothing special. I'm glad Chantel finds being gossiped about on the internet more valuable than views and money. Too bad you can't pay rent with gossip. I mean, unless you're the one making the gossip videos or running the gossip websites, but I digress. She spends the rest of the night talking about how ugly Charlie is with people in her comment section and deleting the comments that are mean to her, and then deletes her response video to Charlie. She eventually falls into a peaceful slumber, kept alive by her CPAP machine, and uploads a video late that evening titled, Spending a Whole Day Working on Myself, where she spends the entire video patting herself on the back for seeing a therapist and saying she's no longer worried about her haters. The next day, she gives an update on her house hunt while gorging on Starbucks. That evening, she uploads a healthy, home-cooked binge of shepherd's pie and various pickled vegetables. On the 27th, she uploads a breakup Q&A, which is unbelievably boring, and the only part of it that I believe is that BB was more interested in video games than their relationship. She then spends the next 24 hours violating YouTube's TOS by sending her fans after her detractors, which are two random Instagram users that have been bothering her in direct messages and, of course, Charlie Gold. YouTube doesn't care much about off-platform users being brigaded, but this behavior towards other creators, especially ones as big as Charlie, can have serious repercussions. She is very, very lucky that Charlie doesn't have a verified checkmark yet, because that's when YouTube really starts paying attention to complaints. She deletes every one of those posts as quickly as she rage types them and follows them up with a very sincere promise that she's done with the haters this time. She then decides to treat herself to another binge cruise to America for some McDonald's. A few hours later, she drops by Charlie's latest video about her and leaves a nice comment that Charlie pins. You seriously have the fucking nerve to call anyone a liar when you're the biggest liar and scammer? Weigh in. Stand up or shut up. Chantal spends the final day of the month fishing for sympathy because of her food addiction, and when it results in people telling her to suck it up instead, she once again blows her top. I'm never posting anything related to food addiction, etc. ever again. You people literally attack everything I post. Why are you here? I was trying to help. 90% of people shit on us obese people on YouTube that we are looking for an excuse, etc. when this article has nothing to do with that. Ridiculous. All people want to do is find some fault and I am so over it. Go fucking be miserable somewhere else. This is deleted several minutes later and replaced with another lecture about food addiction. Which I will spare you. And so with that, we're back to where we started at the first of the month. If there's anything we can take away from this episode, it's that only three things in life are certain. Death, taxes, and the Chantal Cycle. See you all very soon for the next riveting installment of the most popular Chantal show on YouTube, two months running. Next time on The Monthly Chantal. Hey guys, hey guys, hey, 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 Welcome, welcome, welcome back to another video. Today, I am going to be trying some BK, <laughs> A lot of food, I know. BK items I have not tried before. So, 